Hello, and thanks for joining me for another episode of Techspert Weekly, the only weekly tech show that would annoy the piss out of a nun and disgust even the creators of Two Girls, One Cup. I'm back again after a full week's break, during which no doubt lots of fascinating tech stuff happened. I wouldn't know, I spent most of it either unconscious or eating chips. But fear ye not, Uncle Spurt is back in the hot seat. And uh, it's not a real seat, of course, I don't actually have a chair, it's a metaphorical seat. So just imagine uh, some sort of grand throne, um, I was going to say decorated with jewels and gems and stuff, but let's face it, it would probably be inflatable cocks. Uh, so yeah, so um, anyway, does that count as an intro? Yeah, f*** it, that counts. Expert Weekly. So the biggest tech news of the week and the biggest launch of the week was undoubtedly Isu's finally pulling back the curtain on the Zenfone 7 and the Zenfone 7 Pro over on Taiwan, bright and early on Wednesday morning just as I was staggering out of bed with warm drool still dripping down my chin. The Zenfone 7 once again uses the flip camera system of the Zenfone 6, so the rear triple lens setup can pop up and be used as a selfie cam at any time. You get a primary 64 megapixel lens rocking Sony's IMX686 sensor, you've also got an ultra wide angle lens and a telephoto lens with a 3 times optical zoom. Packed on here you also get a 6.67 inch Samsung display with a 90Hz refresh rate and while the Zenfone 7 uses the Snapdragon 865 backed by either 6 or 8 gigs of RAM, the Pro model uses the Snapdragon 865 Plus backed by 8 gigs of RAM. And you've also got a mighty 5000 milliamp battery with quick charge 4.0 30W support. And you've got Android 10 on there with a nice bit of Zen UI 7 slathered on top. So hopefully that should retain the same stock Android feel of the Zenfone 6 while also adding quite a few great bonus features. And if you translate direct from the Taiwanese currency, the Zenfone 7 starts at around 569 quid, whereas the Pro model will cost you 725. So not bad price at all for those kinds of specs and that great camera as well. Should be very strong competition for the OnePlus it series and the like if and when it's released here in the UK. I haven't actually heard a peep out of the UK PRs from ASUS so fingers crossed. Now just a warning, you may want to sit down and clench extra hard for this next piece of news because it's so incredibly shocking that your bowels will probably just explode their way right out of your body in amazement. You all ready? Right, get this. Motorola has only gone and launched a new smartphone. Bang! Intestines all over the floor. You want unbelievable performance, a next level camera system and a powerful battery? Well, Motorola reckons you'll get all that and more from the fresh new budget friendly Moto G9 Play. Although, let's face it, they were hardly going to say it's a big bag of pish, were they? The affordable Moto G9 Play is the first of the much anticipated new G9 series to actually come kicking and screaming out of Motorola's metaphorical womb. And it packs some pretty good specs for just 159 quid here in the UK. You get a mighty 5000 milliamp battery just like the G8 Power plus Qualcomm's fresh new Snapdragon 662 chipset backed by 4 gigs of that RAM stuff. Both are proper upgrades over last year's Moto G8 Play for sure. And you've also got a 48 megapixel camera backed by macro and depth lenses as well as a 6.5 inch 720p HD plus screen. And if all of that got you more hot under the collar than a scantily clad Jacob Reese Mog, well, no worries. You can actually get your grubby mitts on a Moto G9 Play right now from the likes of Amazon. And yes, you buggers, I will try and bring you a full unboxing and review very shortly. And now it's time for the part of the show that's even more cultured than the annual Tramp Fight and Olympics. It's viewer comments. Whoop, whoop. Viewer comments. Yeah. Now, first up, Red Shutter Photography says, I used to think it was a tosser. I was wrong. Your channel is a refreshing change. You weren't wrong, sir. I most certainly am a massive tosser of the first degree, but thanks anyway. Uh, oh, and he continues, uh, never change and be northern and swear more. No fucking problem. Oh, and here's another entry in the uh, which crap celebrity do I look like this week extravaganza. So, jingle. Which crap celebrity do I look like this week? Jedi Polar Bear says you look like Louis Spence open brackets, sorry, exclamation mark, close brackets. Um, apology not accepted, frankly. No, don't worry about it, you're not the first person to point that out. Um, I actually came face to face with the lad as well at uh, an EE event, I think it was, at the Battersea Power Station, probably like six or seven years ago now. It was like looking in the mirror because we were both raiding the sausage roll table at the same time, and pastry dripping down our faces. Oh, we've got another uh, crap celebrity lookalike, uh, it's actually two for the price of one this week, hooray. Which crap celebrity? Celebrity, do I look like this week? Jacob says, I can't be the only one that thinks you look like Chinese actor Guoda. So I'm going to have to bring the show to a crashing halt to actually Google this because I've never heard of the lad. Oh, I'm going down the rabbit hole here. There's the <laughs> type in Guoda, you get all kinds of stuff, mostly delicious looking cakes. Oh, yep, yeah, there you go. 
<laughs> I'm assuming this is the uh, the guy right here that you mean. The one who looks rather confused slash startled and is uh, decidedly going bold. Uh, yeah, no fair play. No one this week fancied telling me that I look like The Rock or Vin Diesel or anything like that. Nope. No. Nah. F*** my life. Uh, next up, Richard says, I've got my 40th next week. Any chance of a happy birthday shout out? Uh, sh I guess because we skipped a week, that means your birthday has actually uh, come and buggered right off. But happy birthday anyway, and feel free to send me some cake in the post or whatever if you've got any leftover. Uh, Craig says, no mention of the Xiaomi Mi 10 Ultra. That phone looks amazing. Uh, yeah, it looks like a bit of a beefcake, uh, but it's having no word whatsoever on it actually coming to the UK. They're still banging on about the Mi 10. In fact, they like relaunched it again this week for reasons. Jim says, if you have the Mi 10 Pro, do you see the Mi 10 Ultra as a worthy upgrade or should I just stay with the Mi 10 Pro? Um, well, I think like the camera's been boosted for the Ultra, you got the faster charge and a couple of the little sort of tweaks here and there. But to be fair, the Pro is still an absolute beast, so I'd say absolutely just stick with that. Unless you are literally drowning in cash, in which case, sure, whatever. Triple uh, Zero says, lockdown has had an impact on you, but I like it, crying smiley face. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> to be fair, if 2020 has taught us anything, it's that anything can literally happen. The entire world could just explode in your face at any moment. So I say, let's give zero let's grab a whiskey bottle, have a damn good time. I'm pretty sure that Descartes sums it up in pretty much the same way. Uh, apparently not everyone enjoys slightly unhinged Chris though. Uh, Kirk says, enjoyed the channel a year or two ago, not so much recently, BFN. Now I figured that BFN stood for bye for now, uh, but I just googled it just to be sure in case he was calling me like a big f***ing numpty or something. And suddenly that's just brought up lots of links for the breast feeder network, and uh, I could potentially end up stumbling down a rather sordid rabbit hole for the rest of the afternoon, so let's just stop that now. Uh, Lego Pieces says Oppo A72 or Moto G8 Power. Oh yeah, um, the Oppo A72 I just reviewed this week uh, for anyone who missed it. Very good smartphone if you've got around sort of £200 to spend. I think the Oppo just about has it for me because it's got the, the, the superior camera tech, very, very good indeed. And it's got, you know, your great battery life, um, respectable performance and everything. Bank Movie Goer says you're doing a whole lot of unintentional PR for Sunderland, Chris. I'm still going to have to go there to see it myself at some point. Yeah, I mean, someone's got to do it, mate. I'm certainly not getting paid by the Sunderland City Council or anything, but, you know, I think I'd do a pretty good advert. Fancy getting slaughtered on cheap Russian import booze that's probably more deadly for you than a whole pint of arsenic. It may churn your insides, but guess what? It's cheaper than a Boots meal deal. Find yourself struggling for breath if you have to stagger more than 20 feet without passing another branch of Greg's? No worries, Sunderland has you covered. No, seriously, I love a bit of Sunderland action. The people there are amazing. Great bit of crack. Uh, so definitely get yourself out there for a night out. I mean, to be honest, I'm on a night out there in quite some time now, unfortunately, especially with the current situation and all that, but hopefully soon. Uh, Jason says, my comments are getting removed uh, but I'm looking forward to your Microsoft smartphone review. Uh, I'm not sure about the comments bit, no idea what's going on there, some YouTube randomness, uh, no doubt. Surface Duo, I don't know if it's actually ever going to come out in the UK, they certainly haven't expressed any intention to do that, uh, but of course you can see uh, the US uh, peeps have all got their hands on it right now as well. Gotta say I'm a little bit hesitant over it due to the slightly mediocre slash aging specs considering that high asking price, but hopefully the overall experience will, you know, elevate it enough over arrival to actually make it worthwhile, but we'll see. Uh, next up, uh, Vikas or Vikas, sorry if I've pronounced that completely wrong, it says uh, 35 degrees is hot for you, come to India once, 45 to 48 degrees in the summer, your bald head will turn red. Uh, yeah, I have actually spent five weeks in India and yeah, unsurprisingly, the second I stepped out of New Delhi airport, my pasty northern skin basically combusted. And let me tell you, my guts were not far behind that either, but I did absolutely adore having curry for literally breakfast, lunch and dinner every day. That was absolutely stunning stuff. Uh, Burrow Sniper 77 says, would you consider using a Xiaomi phone? Um, I'm, I'm assuming you mean sort of like full time. Uh, yeah, I'd be quite happy using a Xiaomi phone full time, like especially if your skin is fuck, those Redmi handsets are incredible value for money. Uh, the Mi flagships, you know, some really, really stunning tech. Again, great value for your cash. And you've got the Poco smartphones as well, which again, incredible value, top end uh, specs. And then you've got that Poco launcher as well, which I'm a big fan of as well. You know, the MIUI launcher, it's getting better. Hopefully MIUI 12 will uh, provide, an, you know, another step up in terms of general usability and friendliness. I am actually using the uh, the old Redmi 9 at the moment as my full-time smartphone. And it's got a couple of little quirks here and there, but overall does the job and it's like 150 quid. Uh, next up, Adrian says, do you actually use that ring fit that is shoved away behind your TV? Um, are you calling me some sort of weakling that looks like he'd probably pass out if he even just contemplated doing a push-up? Because if that's the case, then yeah, you're pretty much right. But I do 
actually use the ring fit on occasion when I have masses of like eel and pork scratch and belly fat to work off. And Robert uh, says, Chris, do the decent thing and give those legs back to the chicken you stole them from. Uh, right, thank you very much. And on that bombshell, we've definitely massively gone over time once again. Uh, but thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who left comments. Not last week, the week before it would have been now. Um, sorry if I didn't get to yours again. Please do slap your comments down below. I'll get through as many of those as possible next week because uh, I'll not be buggering off on another, ho and, uh, and another holiday. The reason being that the IFA Tech Conference kicks off next week. Whoop, whoop. It's actually the first one I'm not going to Berlin for in uh, over a decade now uh, because of obviously uh, the current circumstances and uh, I couldn't be happier about that, to be honest, because I have many, many not so great memories of good old Aoife, the very conference place where it takes place. Uh, it's got a nice little courtyard in the middle. I've vomited in there more times than I dare to remember. But of course, you can expect tons of tech launches to still be happening online. Lots of new smartphones, tablets, all kinds of good stuff. So next Friday's Techspert Weekly should be packed with more meaty goodness than a Ginster's pasty, which to be fair, isn't very difficult. I mean, let's face it, a dead wasp generally packs more meat than one of those things. So just ignore that shit analogy, basically, and brace yourself for lots of shiny tech stuff to become at your face and before that i'll also be appearing on the across the pond cast with sam and matt as well that's gonna be happening on sunday evening 9 p.m uk time uh, that's gonna be live streamed on tinternets the likes of twitch and youtube uh, and also it'll be available soon afterwards on the, the usual plethora of podcast uh, platforms uh, apple uh, google podcast all the good stuff but if you actually come online and join us during the live recording on twitch or whatever then you can actually uh, leave a comment or a question we'll be able to respond to you uh, hopefully during the filming as well should be a lot of fun so you can expect beers uh, shocking revelations or most likely just a lot of online flatulence to be honest so that's the show have yourselves a lovely weekend people as much lots of love mwah, mwah, mwah. and i'll see you all next week cheers